Uh, of course, good morning. Uh, Thursday morning to the citizens and residents of Dominica. And of course, to the many uh, volunteers uh, from the region and extra-regionally, the various institutions, organizations, representatives from various countries and governments who are here helping us uh, with our efforts as a result of Hurricane Maria. I want to especially recognize you. To this morning we have uh, here Dr. Carissa Etienne, who is the director of the Pan-American Health Organization and her representative uh, based in Barbados, uh, responsible for the OECS, including Dominica, and Dr. Uh, Nurse uh, Augustine, who is the local representative for the Pan-American Health Organization. Uh, before I, I speak about the presence of, of PAHO in Dominica, I wish to inform the country that uh, we have uh, reviewed the curfew hours, um, which is currently set at 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. And the new uh, curfew hours effective today will be set at from 6 p.m to 6 a.m. in the morning. So 6 p.m. Uh, to 6 a.m. in the morning, that will allow uh, folks to get to work on time um, or even before time and um, allow you to get home um, uh, safely and, and, uh, and adequately. And of course, these um, times are being reviewed because by and large, uh, most people are behaving themselves. And the more we behave ourselves, or the better we behave ourselves, um, is the um, greater uh, relax we will be with regards to, to the curfew. The, the Tripolis has advised me that he shall review these hours in, uh, in the next 72 hours and advise me, uh, and then I will advise the Excell His Excellency the President on further amendments uh, if needed or required um, in respect to the curfew hours. The state of emergency is still in effect, and, and that will stay in effect for, for some time. But I really want to, first of all, congratulate Dr. Etienne for her re-election as the director of the Pan-American Health Organization. She'll be, she's just started to serve, or very soon she'll com commence um, her second term as, as the director, and um, with overwhelming support from the, the PAHO community. But we're very grateful to, to PAHO, uh, fortunately, was an island before the hurricane. Um, so in respect to making immediate contact with the regional office in Barbados and of course the headquarters, uh, that was um, certainly uh, much easier if they had to mobilize from Barbados or mobilize from, from Washington. But PAHO has been exceptional in assisting us in rationalizing our health situation, uh, advising us on matters we need to pay attention to, uh, sourcing a lot of our pharmaceuticals and, and medicines and ensuring that Dominica has adequate supplies and uh, where we shot, they have been able to, to source the specific um, medicines required uh, on island. They've also been coordinating in large measure the uh, external uh, human resources in, in, in various areas and, and helping to coordinate the presence of a number of um, health and, and medical professionals on island. We could say without uh, any any doubt, uh, had uh, with, with the if power were to be absent from this um, mix of of of, of uh, assistance and, and coordination, uh, we would not be where we are today. So we're profoundly grateful to to Paho, and of course under the leadership of Dr. Etienne, for the extraordinary uh, commitment. We are overwhelmed by the demonstration and manifestation of commitment, concern, care, and the diligence of delivering those assistance to Dominica. And, and we will be eternally grateful to PAO and the membership of PAO uh, for, for this assistance. Because for us, um, before the disaster, and especially post this hurricane, health remains a number one priority for us. Um, you know, these are times when all sorts of health issues can pop up, and therefore we have to be proactive and also take preemptive action uh, to either eliminate the possibilities or manage 
uh, the possibilities. And I think with the expert guidance and the tremendous uh, experience, practical experience of PAO, I, I believe we're in, we're in safe hands. Um, and of course, we've coupled with our local uh, medical uh, and, and health professionals who've been doing a fantastic job. Uh, all of them have really um, redoubled, their, redoubled their commitments to, to, to the citizens and residents of Dominica. And the passion and the love and the care which they demonstrate, um, which are all um, um, words to describe um, the health professionals, um, they really have, um, have dug deep to, to, to get all of these um, um, attributes and, and, and manifesting them themselves in, in the practical way they go about providing care and attention to the patients. But of course, there are some things as citizens that we can do to minimize on our on, on the, on the possibilities of, of health issues there. And Dr. Aten and her team will speak to those issues in, in a more professional manner. But we have to watch what we drink, the, the water we drink, where we drink water from. You know, is it time for leptospirosis and, and you know, and, and rodents and, and, and um, also all the wild, wild animals and so forth. So we have to be very careful with that. Um, the water which Doasco is providing, we're ensuring that it is properly treated, it is safe, and, and, and so forth. So, so we have to be mindful of actions uh, which we can take uh, to prevent ourselves from contracting any um, waterborne or other, other diseases at this time. I, again, I really want to thank the, the citizens of Dominica. This is a time for us to work together. This is not a time for, for negativism. Negativism will not bring us anywhere. As a matter of fact, it will, it will keep us back. Um, negative energy, um, you, you, you need more time to carry it than positive energy. If, if, if something is not going right, or if from your perspective, what can you do to fix it? And if you cannot fix it yourself, who do you know can, who, who can fix it and reach out to that person so that person can fix it? You know, um, a neighbor doesn't have water, you have, share it with the neighbor. Uh, so when the neighbor gets, he could give you a bottle back and share what he gets. So it makes no sense we sit on our porch and criticize and say, well, you know, I haven't gotten, you know, go out, reach out, ask questions. You know, um, you know the, the numbers that we have published that you can message and say, look, I live on that street in that village, in that community, my name is so-and-so, uh, house number uh, 4B, blah, 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 we will reach you. You understand? We will reach you. Um, staying there and posting it on, on social media is not going to help you. It's not going to help you. The same time you're taking to post it on social media is the same time you can get to send a WhatsApp message or send a text to the numbers that have been published um, so that we can, we can reach you. To, to get to 72,000 plus people um, with our terrain is a challenge. You, you need literally thousands of people, volunteers, to get to every home. Because as it is now, in large measure, we're delivering supplies, delivering services to people at their homes. Uh, because we have been searching for, for centers to, to have central distribution points so people could come and know the hours of distribution. But everywhere is mashed up. Every space that you could get in any village, you know, if, if any proper size, you know, is, is a difficult thing. We've been searching for storage facility in Rosal. Uh, we cannot find anyone. That place where we can use that is adequate. Um, so we can say to people, go to this center on this street, open, uh, open hours from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. There'll be people there, you will get this. Um, we have had to be on the road, literally, uh, packaging these items and delivering to people house to house. So it is not a simple operation um, that you can just rub a genie and everything um, is, 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 is fixed. This is a practical operation that has all sorts of inherent uh, challenges associated with it. And therefore we have to be understanding. Um, so let us reach out, let us, let us get going. You know, if your drain is blocked with some galvanized, take it out because you will cause water to uh, settle, mosquitoes start breeding, and who's, who is going to bite? You. And who's going to get uh, all sorts of uh, mosquito-related um, illnesses? Yourself. So, and therefore, so we have to be mindful of whatever actions we take, positive or negative, is going to impact on us. And the question is, what kind of impact do we want on ourselves, our families, and indeed the wider country? I would want to think a positive 
impact a positive influence because we have a huge task. There are thousands of us whose home got, got affected and we forgot to either pay our insurance or we refuse to have insurance. So, how are we going to help these people? So these are the things that we have to exercise our minds, you know, on. There are people whose homes got crushed, literally to the ground. No insurance. And they are unable to go to the banks. They may have no security. They might be pensioners. And the pension is two times of what they earn monthly. And they would have retired 20 years ago. So whatever gratuity they receive, whenever you take it from monies in the bank and you can't put back, it will finish. So anybody who was retired 20, 40 years ago, I don't expect you to have the 100,000 which you got from government or from a private sector person, you'll have used up that. And with illnesses, all our family members are affected by illnesses and we have had to pay significant sums of money uh, to, to send our people overseas for medical care. So a lot of us are in the negative insofar as finances are concerned. But we've lost all what we, we build, all, all our working lives. And therefore, we need to sit down as a nation to speak about these practical issues and to assist the government in addressing those issues. The private sector people who have invested significant sums of money, who have placed their homes, their private homes, um, as security. But their private homes got affected. And therefore, they cannot go to the bank and leverage to the bank for additional resources. And how do we work with them? to ensure that they do not send home the 30 people that they're employed and to start businesses as business operations as soon as possible. So these are some of the practical things that we have to exercise our minds about and, and, and not focus on any negatives or any um, complaining. Um, I could have uh, millions of complaints every day, but to what, val to what, to what end? Who is, who is it going to benefit if I am to complain about things I, I may not be satisfied with or I think that have fallen short or this person have fallen short? Um, because we also have to understand too that every one of us is traumatized at various degrees because we all experience this hurricane we all experience this hurricane you know and um and therefore there are people who are still dazed the people who still cannot function people who cannot face the reality the people who believe that they're still dreaming it's, it is not true it's not real that, that they're in a dream and we have to assist these people and it's the very same people who have to who we rely on to provide us with services at the hospital most of the nurses and doctors lost their roofs, lost their homes, but they're there every day to ensure that when we get to the hospital, there's somebody to care for them. And we have to be grateful and thankful for these things. You see, for these things. Um, because the, while the, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, he also loves grateful people. And, and therefore, while we want to receive, we also want to be grateful um, um, for, for what we've received and also to reach out to people. So they're, they're, it's, 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 it's a task. We are putting things in place to, to, to address some of the concerns with the private sector, with the homeowners, with agriculture, um, you know, and to get farmers back into, into work. So there are a number of things that are happening behind the scenes, and those policies, those programs will be articulated as the days and weeks go by. Um, but understand that, as I said yesterday, we have not earned one dollar in the Treasury since the hurricane, but we have bills to pay. And these bills are coming up every day. And, and, and so one can appreciate the fiscal difficulties which this government will have to face, the country will have to face in the weeks and months ahead. Because if before the hurricane you had, as a small country, fiscal challenges, it is not now that you are unable to earn that you won't have fiscal challenges. So let us um, be grateful to the Lord that we, we, we have seen another day and that there are people uh, like Paho and all of the major benefactors who have been assisting us in, in, um, in, in addressing our concerns. And, and uh, we are optimistic. We are mindful of the global realities, but we are optimistic that we will get the help from the international community and we will address some of the challenges our country faces. It's not going to happen tomorrow night. It's not going to happen next year. It's going to take us years uh, because there are countries who have had hurricanes 10, 15, 17 years ago, and they're still rebuilding. Uh, they're still rebuilding. Even in developed countries, uh, far more uh, small um, economies 
like Dominica and, and, and where the majority of us may not have had insurance on the, on the night uh, of, of, of Hurricane, um, Hurricane Maria. And uh, we are wondering how we're going to get a roof back over our head. I will speak hopefully tomorrow on some solutions for housing that we are discussing with engaging companies, we're engaging countries, we're engaging institutions to find housing solutions that can withstand uh, beyond Category 5, that, 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 that meets all of the um, construction codes, that also addresses the seismic um, situation in our region and, and ensure that, God forbid, some that were to happen to us and we continue to pray that it doesn't happen but if it happens then we're in a better position to withstand it but thank you uh i leave you in the capable hands of the secretary to the cabinet ambassador Farrell. but i really wanted to come in to express publicly our appreciation for dr etienne uh, a, a daughter of the soil from from massac um you know and we have to relocate a number of people from massac you know because they, they're in the ravin there and we can't build back their homes there um, so the number of communities that we have to relocate, you know, Kulibi Street, Koliho, uh, Masak, some parts of, of, of Maho, uh, Campbell, the list goes on, um, Pishlem, and all of this, you have to build communities, homes for these people, infrastructure, schools and, and, and health, uh, health facilities and, and public facilities. So we, have, we can appreciate the, the tremendous task that, um, that, uh, that we have and the tremendous burden on myself as the main fundraiser for the country. But God is good and, and I'm sure the, the good Lord will, um, will, will bless us and we'll, we'll get there, um, not tomorrow night, but sometime. As I say, uh, Rome was not built in the day, but it was built anyway. And, and therefore, Dominica will be built um, day, uh, day by day, but we shall re rebuild Dominica anyway. So Dr. Etienne, thank you and of course congratulations to you. I, I, I envy your situation, you know. Um, which I spoke to you yesterday about, and I may not want to say publicly, but um, I really want to congratulate you and, and for your impression on the on the community, power community, and I think um, you you have, you have um, earned the respect and admiration of, of all of the countries and all of the institutions, even beyond the power um, community. And we want to thank you for for being here, your physical presence. You are here not only as a, as, a, as a Dominican and concerned about the citizens of Dominica. But you're here also as the director of the Pan American Health Organization to say to us in Dominica, the people of Dominica and the residents of Dominica, that power will be there with you um, now and in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much and God bless you.